Okay, before we get to conservation of linear momentum, we are going to do a conservation of mass review. Um, and this is really useful because most of the assumptions we make with um, conservation of mass are still useful for conservation of linear momentum and are used in largely the same way, although there are some differences which we will talk about. So first, conservation of mass review. Um, let's, we're going to go through every problem we've done, talk about what we assumed, um, what the question was, and what the uh, final equation looked like that we ended up solving. Okay? So just a reminder, conservation of linear or conservation of mass looks like the the equation looks like this. Zero is equal to d dt integral over our control volume of rho dv plus integral over control surface of rho w dot n hat dA. And um, our first problem we did was we had a, a jet coming in at an angle and we want to know what was the rate of mass accumulation. So we drew a control volume that went around our cart, we just call it a cart, uh, was perpendicular to the jet and then came around and circled the rest of our cart. Um, we assumed for this problem that we had uniform flow and that our density was equal to a constant. And what that allowed us to do was it allowed us to take both the density and the velocity out of our surface integral and our equation became zero was equal to m dot total minus v jet times a jet times rho. And it was a minus sign because we had uh, a negative dot one, uh, well, our negative velocity for our dot product, right? Because whenever we make our control volume perpendicular to our flow, then our dot product becomes plus or minus one times our velocity. And here we have uh, V jet entering our control volume. And if we remember, entering fluids have a negative sign. Now that's only true if we make our uh, control volume perpendicular to our flow, or our, another way to say it is our unit normal parallel to our flow. So that was, and then, um, so that was asking what is the rate of mass accumulation, and so what we were solving for was m dot total. I asked the same question again, what was the rate of mass accumulation? We have a tank here for the second problem, um, and this time we're given a velocity profile um, and so we were assumed for this velocity profile, um, rho is equal to a constant. And that was all we could assume. We could not assume uniform flow because our flow was not uniform across our control volume surface. And the way I drew my control volume was I, again, circled my tank, came across, came perpendicular across the flow, and then circled the rest of my tank. So this uh, integral um, for uh, across the control volume surface was not able to go away completely, but we were able to draw the density out of the integral as well as the width, the depth into the page of the area that we were integrating over. Because remember, the control volume surface integral is an area integral. So our um, equation became m dot total um, minus rho times b, where b was the depth into the page, times the integral from 0 to h, where h was the width of our um, sheet of water or fluid that was flowing down our surface, of v naught over h squared times 2hx minus x squared um, dx. And it's important to note here that our dA became b times dx here, right? One of the difficult parts about these problems is always figuring out what your dA is going to be equal to. Oftentimes, if we can assume uniform flow and density is equal to a constant, then dA just becomes the area. But if we have to do the integral, figuring out this becomes a little bit tricky. All right, the next problem we did was the um, ketchup packet of doom, if you will. Um, we assumed a lot more for this 
problem. I remember we had a uh, bowling ball come down, hit our ketchup packet, and we were trying to figure out the velocity of our exit. Um, for this problem, we assumed density was equal to a constant again. And we assumed uniform flow. And what we assumed was that the v-ball equal to a constant, which really, when it came down to it, um, told us that the change in volume with respect to time was equal to a constant. Um, and our equation became rho times L times W, where this is the uh, area of the ketchup packet, the length and the width, which is the depth into the page, times dH dt, where h is the height of the ketchup packet. Um, and remember this right here is dv dt. Okay, and then because we assumed uniform flow and incompressible, our integral went away and this just became plus v exit times a exit times rho. Uh, yeah, times rho. Um, and it's positive because our dot product was positive and it's also positive v exit for our dot product because we drew our control volume around just the inside of our ketchup pack container like this. So the ketchup was assumed to be exiting perpendicular to our um, control volume. Cool. So again, there we knew dh dt because uh, we knew the velocity of the um, ball. And here the difficult part of this problem was really just figuring out how um, how to convert da, dv dt, the change in rate of change of volume with respect to time, into something that we could actually calculate, right? So it's easy to say what is the rate of change of volume with time, but it's harder to use the actual numbers given in the problem. And so here we took the, the top, the area of the ketchup packet from the top times the change in height, and that is a change in um, volume. Cool, and the thing we were solving for was our V exit. Great. So the next problem we did was uh, the rate of, what is the, um, actually we said, what is the total mass accumulation? Total of mass accumulation in our, um, in our stretch limo. Um, where we had rain coming straight down, we had a, a tub. Remember, we drew our control volume in this case to be just around the surface of the tub. We didn't, in this case, try to have our tub be uh, perpendicular to the flow. Or, or sorry, not our tub, our control volume be perpendicular to the flow because it, we, honestly, it was, um, it seemed like a lot of work to figure out the angle, figure out the projected area. Um, and in this case, we know the, area and we can just kind of do the dot product and that's what we did. So uh, the first, like we um, assumed a couple of things here though. We assumed density was equal to a constant. We also assumed uniform flow. And that resulted in our conservation of mass equation becoming zero is equal to m dot total plus Um, uh, rho times w dot n hat times a tub. So here, let's erase that, make that a little bit more readable. Here we were able to get rid of the integral. We were able to get rid of the integral because we assumed uniform flow and density is equal to a constant for our, um, our control surface integral but we weren't able to get rid of the dot product. So we actually had to explicitly calculate the dot product, which means we had to figure out what W was, which is the velocity of the rain relative to the car, right? Um, and then we had to, to dot that with the unit surface normal of the control volume surface, which was, this was N hat here. And it wasn't hard, right? It wasn't hard at all, but we had to do it um, because of the, the way we set up our control volume. Um, and then the thing we were solving for was m dot total times the total time we were driving around in order to get the total mass accumulation. Great. 
And um, lastly, for our um, semester long design project, we wanted to know what the largest nozzle exit we can have. So we um, took A1, which is the uh, surface right here. Let's draw our control volume. We're going to draw our control volume right like this, where uh, V is leaving, V exit is leaving at an area A exit, and A1 is much, much larger than A exit. Um, so that's what makes basically makes us a nozzle, right? The velo velocity, well, the area at the, at the beginning is much, much smaller than the area at the end, much, much larger than the area at the end. And we, let's assume we have a good pump, and I took the stats of a, um, a pump used for uh, water jet cutting, because water jet cutting requires very large velocities. And for this problem, we assumed steady state. And you'll note we didn't assume steady state for any of these other problems, and we'll see how that affects our problem here in a second. We assumed uniform flow, and we assumed rho is equal to a constant. And that created an equation where we said 0 is equal to negative a1 v1 plus a exit v exit. Our density disappeared because we had a density multiplied by both of these terms, but it was equal to zero, so we were able to just divide it out. Um, we drew our control volume so that it was perpendicular to our flow, so um, we have a negative dot product for surface, we'll call that surface one and surface exit. So for surface one, we had a negative dot product, which was why we have a negative term here. And because we assumed uniform flow, our integral went away, and so all we have is our area times our velocity. Same with our exit, area times our velocity. And this results in the equation that we've used all semester, really, um, which is V1A1 is equal to V2A2. That's, that's the conservation of mass that we've used quite a bit, right? Um, now, because we assumed steady state, our, our derivative with respect to time disappeared, so we were able to um, get rid of that term completely. Great. So, um, really, that touched these five, five, one, two, three, or five. Yeah, these five examples really touched on all of the different ways in which this equation right here, this conservation of mass equation, can morph based on the type of problem and the assumptions that we give you, right? Um, yeah, so um, we're going to practice these exact same things, but it gets a little bit more complicated with conservation of linear momentum because we're adding in an additional velocity, uh, which we will talk about on the next video.